Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, I wanted to make this video a little sooner, but I was waiting for some hardware to arrive, but better late than never. Now, I have something quite exciting to share with you about an event that's being held here in the UK on the 20th of September this year. Yep, I know it's not that far away, but should give you enough time if you'd like to participate. As part of the RSGB's National Coding Week, the RSGB will be launching a balloon which will be fully equipped with a LoRa Digipeter, essentially using the same technology and protocol that's used for LoRa APRS. Now, generally here in the UK, we use 2 meter band at 144.8 MHz FM for general APRS packet transmissions and receiving. However, this LoRa Digipeter will receive on 439.850 MHz and then rebroadcast your packet back to Earth on 433.850 MHz. Now, there will be a range of receivers set up around the country already set to send your LoRa APRS packets to the APRS network, so you can view your packets on websites like APRS.fi. This means the only hardware you need to configure and worry about is the uplink, the transmit frequency of your LoRa APRS tracker. Now, if you're an RSGB member, you'll also be entered into a competition where you could win £200 in vouchers for the world famous Moonraker ham radio retailer. Now, to win the competition, your signal must be the furthest away from the balloon. The balloon itself should be airborne for around two to three hours and reach up to 90,000 feet. If you are tracking the balloon yourself, the balloon's Laura Digipeter will have a call sign of Golf Bravo 1. Hotel Alpha Bravo. If you want to take part, then you will need a LoRa device that is designed for the 70 centimeter band. And of course, you must have a ham radio license. There are a few different types of hardware supported, but I'll be using one of these. This is the Heltec Wireless Tracker. Now, I think you can order these from some of the retailers here in the UK. So if you're quick, you can still get one in time and get it programmed before the 20th of September. Other supported devices are like the Lilligo T-Beams, which a lot of users purchase to play around with Meshtastic. Now just remember that they must be the model which supports the 70 centimeter band. Now this device has an onboard GPS receiver to capture your location, which is included in your transmitted APRS packet to the balloon's Digipeter. This is how they will tell who was the furthest away. Now, a special tweaked version of the LoRa tracker firmware has been created for this project, and that will ensure that your device will set the correct transmitting frequency and the correct LoRa parameters. The frequency used for this project is slightly different to the usual APRS LoRa frequency that we use here in the UK. So it's imperative that you use this tweaked firmware to ensure that your signal is going through the balloon's digipeter and not through a local eye gate. Now I'll briefly go over the firmware installation and I'll be using my Heltec wireless tracker as a demonstrated device. First, you'll need to visit this GitHub page. Of course, I'll leave a link down below and you need to download the source code. But this can be downloaded as an archive, which of course you'll need to uncompress. You'll then need to use an application on Windows called Visual Studio Code. And within Visual Studio Code, you must also have the platform I.O. extension installed. Now, this assists in gathering the required code and modules to compile the firmware for your device. With Visual Studio running, select the little alien face, which will ensure you're using platform I.O. Then just click the open folder link in the center and then select that folder where you uncompress that archive that we just downloaded. You'll now see the folder structure on the left side. Select the platform io.ini file and look towards the top of the file where it starts with the line default underscore ENVS. Now by default, the Heltec wireless tracker should be listed, but just make sure that whatever device you're using, the name of it is listed here. Now you can look in the variants folder for the exact name of your supported device if you're unsure on what to type there. What you will also notice is that down on the bottom right of the screen, Visual Studio Code will be downloading all of the required modules that's needed to compile this project. Now, it may take some time, but just wait till it's finished before proceeding to do anything else. Now, once it has finished, you can now compile the firmware. 
just to make sure everything is working and the correct files have been installed. To do this, you just press that little tick down on the lower left of the main window. Now, once that's finished compiling, you can now proceed to plug in your LoRa tracker device into your computer's USB port. Now, once it's plugged in, a virtual serial port should be available and you can check this in your device manager just to ensure that it's listed there and so you can see which COM port number has been assigned. Now, Visual Studio is quite clever. It should automatically find the device, but if it does not, then you can click where it says auto on that bottom line and then manually select the device's COM port. Once you're happy here, press the little icon that's in the form of an arrow pointing to the right. This will now download that firmware to the device. Now, if successful, then you'll see this success status message at the bottom, just in that debug dialog window. So the next step is to load a default configuration to the device. And at this point, your tracker might be rebooting itself. So unplug the USB cable, hold down the user button, and then plug the USB cable back in. The tracker will now be ready and waiting for its configuration data. So back over onto Visual Studio Code and select the tracker underscore conf.json file, which will show you a list of default parameters which will get loaded into the device. Now you can change them here if you want to, but the recommended method is to send this default configuration to the device. And then in the next step, we'll use a Wi Fi connection to change that last part of the configuration. So press the little alien icon and under project tasks at the top, find your device. Now for me, it's Helltech Wireless Tracker. Click on it and the folder should expand. Then go down to where it says upload file system image and then just click on it. The default configuration will now be uploaded to the device. Now once that's finished, unplug the USB cable from the device. Now plug the cable back into the tracker and then once it's booted, it will create an ad hoc wireless access point, which we'll need to connect to from a Wi-Fi enabled computer. So scan your local Wi-Fi connection and click on the one titled as LoRa Tracker AP. Now the password for this, it's just 12345678900. And then once connected, open a browser and head to 192.168.4.1. And you'll be presented with this screen. The first thing to do will be to change the no call to your actual call sign. Now I'm leaving the SSID as seven and I'm not going to change the symbol or overlay characters here as they've been purposely set for maximum visibility within this competition. Now there are some other parameters that you can change like smart beacon, etc., but do not change any frequency or LoRa parameters that you see on this page. You can also leave the comment boxes blank so that your data bursts are a lot shorter. However, once finished, press the save button on the top and your LoRa tracker will now reboot and start transmitting its position packets on the frequency specifically designed for this project. If you're going to use this indoors, then I would recommend to put it near a window so that the GPS antennas can receive GPS signals and obtain a valid position. The screen of the tracker will display your location along with a maiden head locator, and it will only transmit if these are valid. Of course, you could mount this outside so it has a clear view of the skies. Now, when it comes to which antenna to use, well, that's entirely up to you. Using the one that came with it is probably not going to be very good. We could use a beam antenna or a simple vertical, or even a homemade 5 8 antenna. The choice is yours, so get creative with that. Remember, these devices are quite low power and your signal needs to travel quite far. However, the beauty of LoRa is that it works extremely well under those conditions. Now on the day, I'd recommend to turn on your tracker around 10 a.m. and then just keep an eye on the APRS.fi website around your home location or wherever you're located with the tracker, just to see if your packet was relayed to the APRS network by the DigiPeter on the balloon. So this is quite an exciting project to test out and get involved with. I'm not too sure if anybody outside of the UK is going to be able to participate. And I know specifically the USA, you're not going to be able to participate in this. However, maybe you guys over in Ireland or even down the west side of Europe. Anyway, guys, good luck, everybody. And I'll see you online on Saturday.